Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Good morning. I'm Pastor Teresa Wetzel here at the Miller First United Methodist Church, and it is a joy that you have chosen to worship with us this morning, that you have invited us into your home, into your sanctuary. It is an honor that we feel deeply, so thank you. As you worship with us this morning, I would invite you to comment below this video with the names of who is worshiping with you today. Also, please comment with any prayer requests that you may have. Because this is a pre-recorded service, we will not be able to lift those up during the service itself. But know that others who are watching and worshiping with you can read those and hold your concerns or your joys in prayer. And know also that we here at the church will read through those and we'll be praying. I also want to let you know that when it comes to uh, the time in our service that we dedicate to our offerings and our gifts to God, uh, there will be some instructions on the screen as to how and where you can give. Um, if you are not a part of our regular worshiping community here in Miller, uh, our mailing address is there on the screen. Um, and if you have questions about how to set up automatic giving, feel free to call the church. That number is 605-853-3656. Also, as you uh, know, if you have been worshiping with us the past couple of weeks, the reason these services are pre-recorded is that I, as the pastor, have been on vacation, but I will be back in the office tomorrow, the 22nd. So I look forward to, to hearing from, from you all and, and getting back into the swing of things. So thank you for allowing me that time away, and I look forward to being back with you. With that, let's turn our hearts and our minds towards God and our worship as we sing together our opening song, Lord, listen to your children praying. Let us pray together our opening prayer. God of justice and joy, we gather in your name to proclaim the good news of your presence among us. Where there is oppression, we will shout a message of your liberating love. Where there is sorrow, we will sing a song of your healing love. And where there is fear, doubt, confusion, or anger, we will shine the light of Jesus Christ, your incarnate love, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our psalm reading this morning is Psalm 41. Listen now for the word of God. Happy are those who consider the poor. The Lord delivers them in the day of trouble. The Lord protects them and keeps them alive. They are called happy in the land. You do not give them up to the will of their enemies. The Lord sustains them on their sickbed. 
In their illness, you heal all their infirmities. As for me, I said, O Lord, be gracious to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies wonder in malice when I will die and my name perish. And when they come to see me, they utter empty words while their hearts gather mischief. When they go out, they tell it abroad. All who hate me whisper together about me. They imagine the worst for me. They think that a deadly thing has fastened on me, that I will not rise again from where I lie. Even my bosom friend in whom I trusted, who ate of my bread, has lifted the heel against me. But you, O Lord, be gracious to me and raise me up that I may repay them. By this I know that you are pleased with me because my enemy has not triumphed over me, but you have upheld me because of my integrity and set me in your presence forever. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. We now have an opportunity to demonstrate to God our gratitude for all that God has done for us as we present our tithes and our offerings. Let us give back to God. And now let us pray together as we dedicate our gifts to God. O oh Lord, you have done great things for us. As we rejoice in your blessings, let us also rejoice in the opportunity to spread your joy to others through these offerings. May these gifts help transform our community and our world. May they bring your kingdom of justice that we may all shout with joy. Amen. And so we read uh, from this final exhortations, greetings, and a benediction from Paul. But we appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to respect those who labor among you and have charge of you in the Lord and admonish you. Esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. And we urge you, beloved, to admonish the idlers, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all of them. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seeks to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And will you join me as we pray? Gracious and loving God, we just thank you today for the gift of your word, for this word of Paul's. As we continue to reflect on these three simple questions by Bishop Job, help us to incorporate them more fully in our understanding of who you are, who we are together 
and who we are as individuals, as your disciples and followers. Today we pray that uh, you would speak to our hearts. For many of us, there's a sense of frustration. For some, there's a sense of anxiety. There's a, even a sense of loneliness and unsure about what the future holds. But help us today, Lord, in this moment, to reflect on the power of prayer. That we may understand the ways of self-giving love. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I was uh, uh, in a meeting, a Zoom meeting, uh, with our Amen uh, Noon Bible Study. It's a men's Bible study. It meets every other week. If you're interested in joining that group, talk to Dave Eastland. Uh, we also have that Higgins Bible Study led by Don Dittmanson. And we were chatting about uh, this time of uh, pause in our lives uh, you know, people working from home and no school and, and trying to kind of sort through uh, what are the places, though, that we have seen God. And uh, it was interesting. We chatted about um, that we're, we're paying a little bit more attention to nature. Uh, not only nature, we're also paying more attention to family and friends. And I don't know about you, but I've kind of reconnected with some friends I went to seminary with and uh, some family, longtime family uh, friends and family and our and just in our counters and conversations and it's been marvelous and wonderful but also we talked about nature and I was reading about a man who uh, loves to to look at birds and he talked about um, the mother uh, mallard duck and he notices that this mother duck has seven ducklings and and so he was just fascinating and watching how she was protecting those uh, those ducklings, she would come around and kind of encourage them and keep them in line. But if there was a sense of danger, she would hide them, uh, making sure that they were okay. And if their danger was to a point uh, where someone was coming close, she would immediately get up and fly away. And the man thought, well, that's kind of a strange thing. But he later went on to read that that it makes the mother a decoy, that the mother wants to lead that sense of danger away from the ducklings. In a sense, offering this image or this picture of self-giving love. As I said, we have been in this series of three simple questions of who is God, who am I, and who are we together? And some truths that we have come to out of that is there, these three simple questions, is that Pastor Taylor shared with us that God is greater than anything we can comprehend or imagine. God is greater than anything we can comprehend or imagine. The next week, Pastor Andrea shared with us that each of us is God's beloved child, just like every other human being on God's good earth. Uh, last week, I talked about our life or answering the question, who are we together? All together, we are God's family, and as Christians, we are the living body of Jesus Christ in the world. You know, as we uh, as think about these three questions and how do we live out these truths that we've discovered I think one of the foundational pieces for us as Christians is the power of prayer. It's the gift of prayer. And I have to admit, sometimes I think we, we miss the boat uh, when we do not understand the, the significance of prayer as a part of our every moment of life. So often we limit our prayers to those moments when we find ourselves in crisis or, you know, we, we almost want to do this kind of magical peace and I think so often we as people of God and also people in the community outside of the church, we think this praying, praying is, is like, uh, you know, giving me the wish list that somehow God will just break through in the moment that we want God to work with us. But prayer, I think, helps us to understand these questions more fully in our lives. It helps us to see that we are to wait upon God. It helps us to be patient in the ways that we live life. And in Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, this chapter 5, in this kind of benediction, he creates a litany of things and ways that we should live as God's people. And the three verses I want to focus on is 16, 17, and 18. He begins by saying in those three verses, Rejoice always, pray unceasingly, and giving thanks to God in all circumstances. To me, the foundation of prayer, praying the questions, 
helps us to understand more fully Paul's call to us to emulate Jesus. Jesus who gave of himself through his death and resurrection. Through Jesus' death and resurrection, we have the example of self-giving love. Now, it doesn't mean we don't love ourselves, but it begins to help us to pray the understanding prayer of how do I live as God's person in this world? And let's be honest, that's not easy, you know, because our ego, our own needs, oftentimes we, we focus on those. But I believe that the gift of prayer begins by these words of Paul, rejoice always. And the understanding of that rejoice always is that prayer becomes a way of living. Now, how can it we have joy always? You know, we find ourselves in difficult moments. Uh, we find ourselves in places where the world is a, a, kind of disillusioned with the world. We're disillusioned with conversation and opinions and differences. And, and when we get in those moments of disillusionment, it is important for us to have prayer as a way of living. Because I think when we begin to focus on God and place our trust in God, it is through those moments of prayer, not just on Sunday morning and not maybe just in the morning, but that, that prayer is, it, it leads us to a place of rejoicing in our lives. Leo Biscalia is a, an author and writer about love and relationships, and he he talks about one of his books, The Misery, Misery Dinner. And uh, what he describes is that when uh, he remembers distinctly the day his father came home to their family meal and said, uh, we're going to have to cut a lot of expenses because my partner in our business has stolen a lot of the money. Uh, he embezzled it from the business. And so the money, uh, the, the business was in trouble and, and we might have to file for bankruptcy. Well, this uh, was just horrible news to the family and was pretty discouraging. And so they began to think about ways, well, how can they uh, kind of make it through this difficult time? He says that um, in this time, his mother, unknowns to the family, goes off and sells a bunch of jewelry that she has, and she uses the money. Uh, but she first plans this lavish meal. And about three or four days later, her father comes home, the father comes home and they come to this table that looks like a Thanksgiving meal. And it kind of confused everybody. And in fact, the husband was like, dear, what are you doing? You know, we can't afford to, to eat like this. And uh, she, she says uh, to the family, he said, uh, Leo said, I never forgot. She said, the time for joy is now when we need it most, not next week. This misery dinner, he called it, inspired their family to be my, remember the gift of always rejoice. Even in the most difficult of moments, Paul encourages us that prayer becomes a way of living. And that living reminds us of the joy of God, God's love and the gift of Jesus Christ in our lives. The next verse, 17, Paul uh, Paul talks to us about how we are to pray unceasingly, and that prayer leads us to be faithful, faithful in our living. As we said earlier, prayer is not a kind of a one occasional moment thing. Uh, praying is an, a, a constant part of our lives. It, it gets us in touch with God. It, it gets us in touch with listening to God, speaking to us and guiding us and how we are to be living as God's people. When we find ourselves in those difficult jams and moments, those, uh, those places where our relationships struggle, when we find ourselves living in close quarters with our families and they're driving us crazy, Jesus taught his disciples. He modeled the power of prayer. We see over and over again where Jesus teaches the disciples to pray, how he separates himself so he can spend time with God alone. This gift and this power of prayer helps us and leads us to be faithful as we continually pray to God. Uh, we understand God's presence in, in our lives. We, uh, Dwight David Eisenhower um, talks about this uh, and understanding personal prayer as a way 
of keeping us faithful. He writes, uh, personal prayer, it seems to me, is one of the simplest necessities of life as basic as sunshine, food, water. What I mean, in effect, to get in touch with the infinite, the holy. Our prayers are unperfect. However, in my life, prayer multiplies the strength of the individual. Prayer multiplies the strength of the individual and brings within scope of a person's capabilities almost any conceivable objective. Henry Nouwen says that prayer leads us to God's heart as we become one with God. See, prayer leads us to be this faithful person, and so Paul tells us to pray unceasingly, to always rejoice, pray unceasingly. And in doing so, we then lead ourselves to understand the gift of God in this Easter season. The death of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus reminds us and teaches us that as followers of Jesus, we are to be people of self-giving love. And self-giving love is defined as giving ourselves away. It's, um, it's a willingness to deprive ourselves, um, to deny ourselves, to sacrifice ourselves, to be unselfish, disregarding our own advantage and welfare for other people. You know, every time I meet with a couple about getting to get married, I talk about how they are to give 100% of themselves to the other person and expect nothing in return. In essence, the idea of sacrificial love isn't, well, you know, if I do this for you, you do this for me. Sacrificial love says, I sacrifice my own needs, wants for another. I read a, a quote that talked about how... Um, that we are to be people to, of self-giving love and in all our circumstances give life. And this quote is, this is the beauty of self-giving love. Men and women driven by love freely to choose to give up their autonomy to limit their own freedom by committing themselves to the good of their spouse. Love is so powerful that it impels them to want to surrender their will to their beloved in this profound way. You know, I think this speaks to where we find ourselves in our community as well. You know, wearing masks or doing those things where people are like, well, I don't know about all of that. But, but Jesus reminds us that we limit our own freedom. We choose to give up our own autonomy for the betterment of another. Love is so powerful that it impels us as followers of Jesus to just surrender our own will to the other, to the beloved to the child of God, to the family of God in this profound way. You know, my friends, um, this self-giving love, uh, Paul talks about it in the verse uh, to give thanks to God in all circumstances. And we ask ourselves, well, how do we do that? How do you give thanks to God in all circumstances? How do you always rejoice? How do you pray constantly? When we pray these three questions of who is God, who am I, and who are we together, we begin that foundational experience of knowing God's presence in all that we experience of life, which leads us to a way of always rejoicing and having joy in our lives. It, it leads us to a, a path of, of understanding and being faithful to God, constantly praying, which leads us to always to give thanks to God in all circumstances we find ourselves. I would hope that you would memorize this, these three verses this week. Make it top of your mind. Rejoice always, pray unceasingly, and, in, in, and to give thanks to God in all circumstances. As we pray these questions together, uh, may we truly understand the path and the way of Jesus and self-giving love. First grader, her class was having them field days. Remember, we would be having a field day where they would do all these different races. And uh, Katie was a girl who won a few ribbons, and she won one race and got a blue ribbon. Her little friend Bruce didn't win any race and didn't even get a, a ribbon, and he was, he was pretty upset about it. And uh, Katie was listening to him talk uh, and feeling bad for him. She hands him the blue ribbon she won for her race. And he was like, well, you don't need to. And he, he just took it and he was, he was just happy. Katie's mom saw um, 
saw this happen, and so later on their drive home, she said to Katie, so why did you give your, your blue ribbon away to Bruce? And she said, well, you know, I was just feeling bad about how he hadn't won, but that he really wanted a blue ribbon. And I figured, I knew I already won the race. I didn't really need a ribbon, so I gave it to him. My friends, this quote, this is the beauty of self-giving love. Men and women driven by love freely choose to give up their autonomy, to limit their freedom by committing themselves to the good of spouse. We can extend that to family, uh, to our church, to our relationships with others, to our community. Love is so powerful that it impels us to want to surrender our own will to their beloved, to the beloved in community in this profound way. Kyle Rayner says, everyday life must become itself, our prayer. May we, as followers and disciples of Christ, be people who pray the questions through self-giving love. As we move into our time of prayer, I would invite you to take a few moments to read through the comments under this video to see what prayer requests have been lifted up so that you may hold those in prayer. I will offer up a, a, or give us space for a moment of silence and then guide us through the remainder of our prayer time. Let us pray. Almighty God of all creation, we join our voices to praise you today, singing of your wonders, giving thanks for your grace and care, and celebrating the joys of life you have blessed us with, family and friends, new relationships and deeper relationships, new life and transform lives, reconciliation and restoration. On this day, we are especially grateful for the gifts of fathers, the gifts of being a father and fathers that we miss. We thank you for the many ways that our fathers have shaped us, for their example and their love. Yet we also pray for those who have painful relationships with their fathers, those who are estranged from their fathers and fathers who are estranged from their children. And God, we pray for those who are unwilling or unable to accept the responsibilities of fatherhood. Gracious God, all of our prayers are summed up in the longing for your kingdom, that wonderful, amazing, and new reality that is emerging all around us. And so we join our voices together, God, praying for the coming of your kingdom, using the words that Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
And now, friends, receive the benediction. Go now, for you are chosen and sent in the Spirit. Pray at all times. Be thankful in all circumstances. Keep what is good. Avoid every kind of evil. To all in need, bear witness that the time has come when the Sovereign Lord will save his people. And may God, who gives peace, make you holy in every way. May Christ Jesus clothe you with salvation and victory. And may the Holy Spirit speak through you with the good news of hope. Go in peace. Amen.